Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to show you how you can implement two-factor authentication in your application using Xano as your backend. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of exactly what we're doing and what you will need to accomplish this. Essentially what we're doing is we are building some API endpoints in Xano with the Twilio Verify API to enable two-factor authentication. We're gonna go over actually building those API endpoints inside of Xano. And finally, at the end, we'll have a short demo just showing you everything working. By the end of this video, you will be able to set up your own two-factor authentication inside your Xano backend. What we won't be going over today is actually implementing the flow of that in your front end. However, if you have any questions about that, definitely make sure to let us know and we'll help you out as best we can. Because we're building those API endpoints inside Xano, as long as you understand how to work with those API responses inside your front end, you should be good to go. Okay, so let's go over exactly what we're gonna need to make this work. For this example, we're going to be using the Verify API from Twilio. Now, you may need to upgrade your Twilio account before you can use this API, so keep that in mind. Twilio is going to handle sending the verification token and also making sure that the one the user inputs is valid. In the Twilio documentation, we are given curl commands, which make building these endpoints in Xano super easy. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's take a look at the Verify API. Twilio's documentation makes this super easy to follow. You can see that we are given a few steps to work through to verify those tokens. The first step is to create a verification service. And this is something that you should only have to do one time unless you decide that you want to separate that if that makes sense for you. For us, for this example, we're just doing a very basic two-factor authentication demo, so we're only gonna do this once. You don't even have to do this using the API. You can do this right in your Twilio console. I'm gonna show you how to do it with the API because that may be useful to you later on. When you create a verification service in Twilio, what that's doing is that's basically setting up the authentication in Twilio. It's recording things like the name of the service, parameters as far as the codes that you want to send are concerned, things like that. You don't need to do this per token or anything like that. You can just create it once and you can use it for, uh, as far as I can tell, as long as you want. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do, and you may know how to do this already, so I'm just going to be very brief with it. I'm gonna show you how to add some environment variables to your workspace. Now, what those are gonna let you do is those are gonna let you store a couple of values that Twilio needs in all of these API calls, just so you don't have to type them in or worry about copying and pasting them each time. You can just store them right in your workspace and they will be available for you to call just like any other variable. So I'm gonna go over here to my settings. And now I'm just gonna click manage. And you can see I already have mine filled out here, but it's very simple. You just click this button here and you give it a name and you put the value in there. Now for Twilio, we want the account SID and the auth token. And you get those from your Twilio console. You can see it says, Ahoy, Christopher, welcome to Twilio. And we have those values in the account info box right here. You can just click these buttons to copy and then paste them right in Xano. Once you filled in all your values here, just hit save. And now those have been saved, so you can recall them quickly in your function stack. So now I'm gonna go over to Xano and I'm gonna show you what this endpoint looks like. You can see I have an endpoint here called Create Verification Service. So I'm gonna click on this. All I have in here is this API call. We don't really need to do anything fancy here because we only need to run this once and we only need to pull one value out of it. We don't need this to be passed to our front end or anything like that. So let me click into this API and I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. So this button right here, this is gonna be your best friend when working through this or really implementing any external API. It's this import curl button. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hide this quickly and I'm just gonna show you what that import curl button does. So if I click the plus sign here, I'm gonna to go to my external API request. I'm gonna go back to my Twilio documentation and they have a little copy button up here. So I'm just gonna click that and see this curl has been copied to my clipboard. And now what Xano can do with this is I can just paste that in there and click import. And you can see Xano has filled in all the parameters, the headers and everything, as well as the URL for that API call. So I don't have to type in any of this manually, makes it super easy. Now let's talk about how you would need to change this to work for you. For the parameters, the only thing that we really have here to modify is the name 
of the two-factor authentication verification service that's going to be stored in Twilio. That's also going to be shown in the messages that are sent out, so keep that in mind. I'm just gonna keep this as default. Now we do need to modify this header a little bit. It's not quite what we need it to be yet. What Twilio needs, and if we look at the documentation, you can see Twilio needs the account SID and the auth token. Now, if you remember a little bit earlier, we stored those in our environment variables. So we're just going to pull those right into our function and I'll show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna click right here where it says Twilio account SID. Those are just the default values that were in that curl command that we pasted earlier. I'm gonna click this and I'm just going to delete that whole thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type percent %s and then a colon and then percent %s. And I'll tell you why we're doing that right now. So what percent %s does is that just signifies a variable that we can use with a filter called sprintf. And what sprintf does is it stores a value in that percent %s. So I'm gonna click add filter and I want sprintf and my arguments are going to be right here under ENV, that stands for environment. And I'm going to click my account SID. I'm gonna add another argument because we need two values here. And I'm going to go auth token. Those are the environment variables that we added earlier. I'm going to click update here. And we need to do one more thing to make this work for Twilio. I'm gonna click on this one more time, our percent %s, percent %s. I'm gonna add one more filter, and this is going to be base64 encode. You won't necessarily need to do this all the time for every API or anything like that. This is just something that Twilio requires. So then we click save. And if we run this, let's take a look at our result here. You can see we've got our result. It has created our My First Verify service. Now there's one thing that you're gonna need here. You can see this URL right here. We have this big long string of letters and numbers here. Go ahead and copy this and just save it somewhere because you're going to need it to construct the other endpoints. Of course, if you wanted to, you could take this value and store it in an environment variable and use that in the future if you wanted to do it that way like we just saw earlier. It's totally up to you. For me, I'm just gonna copy it and save it somewhere. I do want to make sure to note here again, just really quickly, you don't need to build an endpoint for create verification service. You can also do this right inside of Twilio. Okay, so for the second step, we need to actually build the endpoint that sends the verification token. And we can see in our Twilio API documentation that is right here, it says step two, send a verification token. And we have our curl right here. So just like we did for the first endpoint, I'm gonna copy this curl, I'm gonna paste it into Xano and show you how to build out the rest of this function. I'm gonna click my plus button. I'm gonna say I want an external API request and I'm gonna click import curl and we will paste that right there. And then I will click import. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do here is I want to go ahead and replace this value right here that's just full of X's. That's going to be what we copied from the result of the first endpoint that we made, the create verification service endpoint. So I'm just gonna paste that right in there again. If you are doing this in the Twilio console, you can just get that value from there if you didn't make the endpoint. I'm gonna click Save there. The parameters are what is Xano going to pass to this API request? And we are passing the phone number and a value called channel. Where is this verification token being sent? And then the channel is SMS because we're sending a text message. So I'm gonna click on this value right here that has the phone number stored in it. And I'm gonna change this to get the phone number from my user record, we are calling this record in step one of our function stack. And my value is phone number. I'm using dot notation to navigate right to that phone number value. But I need to do a couple of things to the phone number. Now there's going to be different ways that you can go about this. Most people will probably use regex to essentially take whatever value is in that phone number field and format it in a way that Twilio expects. I'm going to use replace filters here, just because I find in my case with the data that I have, it's simpler for me to do that, but you could definitely do regex if you wanted to, and we have documentation available on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these replace filters, and what these are gonna do is these are going to replace special characters that are contained in my phone number. 
and just remove them, essentially. Replace this one. And then we need one more. There we go. So now we are removing those characters from our phone number, but I need one more. Again, this is specific to my use case for this video. You may not have to do this. Twilio wants a plus sign with the country code in the phone number that it takes in. When you have special characters that you're passing through parameters in the URL, which is essentially what we're doing here, we need to make sure that those characters are properly escaped so they're not modified when being passed through as a URL parameter. So to do that, I'm going to add one more filter, and this one is going to be called regex underscore quotes. And it's going to update the supplied text value to be properly escaped for regular expressions. And my delimiter is going to be just a slash right there. I'll click update. So that's gonna make sure that our phone number is properly formatted to send this verification token. And now the only other thing we need to do is we need to change our headers. This is just like we did in the previous step. I'm going to clear this out. And I'm gonna add my sprintf filters to this with my SID and my auth token. Update that. And then we need to add a base64 encode. Perfect. So now if we save this, Let's give it a shot, shall we? Let's go ahead and send a verification token and make sure that that works. So I have my phone right here. I'm going to run this endpoint. I'm going to get the user record of the authorized user is what I'm doing in this endpoint. So whatever user matches this auth token, that's the record that it's going to query, which is me. I have my actual phone number in here. I'm going to click run. And we can see that I and receiving a verification token. Just like that, very cool. And of course, in our result, we can see the phone number that it was delivered to, and this result also will deliver send code attempts in here as well. If you want your logic to react to that data in any way, it's all here. We're staying very simple for this example, but I just wanted to point out that it is there and available for you. I definitely recommend checking out the documentation for the Twilio Verify API, which I'll have linked down in the description to go over all of these different values in more detail. So that's all there is to sending a verification token. And now our third step is going to be actually checking that verification token, making sure that it has been returned and is valid. And then our user can proceed with whatever we're allowing them to do. Okay, so for checking the verification token, again, we're provided with curl right from Twilio. It's formatted practically the same as the other endpoints that we've worked with. You have your SID and your token that you'll have to fill in using those percent %s variables. And by the way, there are also a couple of different ways that you can do that. This whole process is very flexible. The goal for this video is to essentially show you that it can be done and get you started on the right path to adding two-factor authentication to your applications that use Xano as a backend. So when this API runs, this will check whether the user provided token is correct and provide an approved or a pending status. There is a whole page of additional verification check documentation that you can review here if you would like. Right now, I'm gonna walk you through how to build that endpoint in Xano. So going over to Xano, again, I have already built this example. We have an input that is taking the token so that's going to be passed from your front end back into Xano. That's going to be whatever your user types into that box where they have to type in their token and then they submit it. That's going to go back into Xano so we can pass that to the Twilio API. I'm then getting a user record by the authenticated user. And I'm doing that so I can get their phone number again, just like in the previous endpoint that we created. You can see I still have my replace filters here and my regex quote. And then the second parameter in this call is going to be code. And the code is the token that the user is entering in your application. For this, I'm using the input of token that is specified in this function stack. Now I'm gonna run this endpoint. I'm gonna type in the code that we got in that text message earlier, and I'll show you what a positive result looks like. Let me look at my phone here for a second. I'm gonna type in my verification code. Now let's run. And you can see we got a valid response 
and we can see our status is approved. So we know that we're good to go. We can pass this response back to our front end, showing that this code is valid and our user can continue. So what I'm gonna do now, we're pretty much done, but I just kind of want to go over the flow because I know that there's a lot here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a verification service. You can do this through an API endpoint, or you can do this on your Twilio console, whichever you prefer. We need to then take the value that that endpoint gives us, and we need to use that to set up our send a verification token and create the verification token endpoints. That value is placed inside the URL for our API call right here, right after services. When we build our send a verification token endpoint, we need to make sure to specify our user's phone number. We may need to do some formatting to that phone number depending on the data that you have coming in. And you need to add your account SID and your auth token that you get from your Twilio console into the headers. And then the last endpoint that we're going to create is the check the verification token, which is very similar to the send verification token step. We still have that value from our create verification service endpoint in there. We still have our phone number being formatted just like we expect. But in this case, we're specifying a code instead of a channel. That code is the token, which we're getting from an input. And then our headers have the same account SID and auth token specified in this call. Okay, so I know that that's still a lot. So I did want to walk you through just a super quick example of these endpoints working inside a front end. So this is a Dalo. And what I have going on here is my login button. So this will log in the user and then we're passed to this screen here. And what this screen does is when this screen loads, we have a custom action that calls that create a verification token API. So that takes the logged in user sends them a verification token. And then when we type in the token and click this OK button, we have another custom action that calls the check verification token API, which then takes whatever the user inputs here and passes it to that API endpoint in Xano to check whether or not that verification token is valid. And it returns either a success or a failure. Based on that result, that is where Adalo takes the user. Okay, so let's run this. So I'm going to click preview. I'm going to click log in. I'm going to type in my email and my password and click log in. And now we will wait just a second for that uh, verification token to come through. Okay. So we've got 739022. I'll click okay. And you can see it says, congrats, you are logged in. Now let's see what happens if we type in an incorrect token. So I'm just going to put a bunch of numbers after this and click OK again. And you can see it says, sorry, that token was invalid. Please go back and try again, which is exactly the result that we want. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this helpful and it gets you well on your way to adding two-factor authentication to your applications that use Xano as your backend. If you have any questions, definitely make sure to let us know in the comments below. Visit us on support chat or in the Xano community. Like and subscribe for more Xano content and we will see you in the next one.